Welcome back, all you big boy soldiers, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today we're looking at Cloud's hometown from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Nibelheim. Specifically, Nibelheim in the past, just before Sephiroth's mild oopsie-daisy. Eventually, you do return here in the present day, and I'll be sure to do a comparison when I reach that part. But for now, let's take in this quaint backwoods town as it is at this moment. I have to say, the increase of scope from the PS1 game is impressive. What was a single screen is expanded to all of this. I knew they nailed the industrial vibes of Midgar in the remake, but I was curious if they could pull off the more homely locations in the next game. Sure enough, they did. I want to take note of every little detail they added, just to see how much love the developers put into this world. From the front gate all the way to the town center is completely new. In the original game, the front gate is connected to the town center, but in Rebirth, there's all this new space. Starting at the entrance, we have a few new houses. Through here is a pretty big open space. A lot to notice in this spot. Some chickens, dogs in cages, a tool shed. Even more chickens? By god, there are a lot of chickens. But where do they keep the chickens? I'm no chicken guy, but I have a feeling most people don't let them roam around a big area like this with no fence to stop them from walking out. I don't see a chicken coop, pen, anything. Maybe they live in this building? Hard to say. I was looking at the area beyond this little fence and wished I could go over, but then I remembered you can climb over a lot of stuff in this game. Gonna take a while to get used to that mechanic. I don't know what I expected to find over here. Moving on. Let's head up the stairs to the next level of town. Huh, there's some colorful clothes hanging up here. You know, I noticed something like this while recording footage for the remake tour. There was a clothes stand in Midgar selling bright and colorful clothes just like the ones hanging up here. But when you look at all the NPCs hanging around, most of them are wearing super desaturated clothing. It's a trope you see in a lot of media. You kind of want non-important characters to kind of fade into the background. It's not like they're completely invisible or anything but they're boring enough to keep you focused on the characters that matter. And I think it's funny that these colorful clothes exist. It's like the person who textured these shirts didn't get the memo that most NPCs in the game wear relatively unassuming outfits. Though there are some that are a bit more colorful, so I'll give them a pass. I like this guy. He spends all day just hopping back and forth over this fence, and there's a chest right over there. This is obviously to reinforce the idea that you can climb over some terrain. And what's funny is that it actually worked. When I came by here, I saw the chest first. Because vaulting over objects wasn't an option in the first game, I didn't even consider it here to reach that chest. I mentally took a note to keep an eye out for future paths that lead me there. But a second later, I saw the guy jump the fence, and it reminded me that I could do that myself. It kinda seems corny to have this guy's sole purpose be to remind the player that they can hop over short terrain obstacles, but hey, it works. Here we are, the town center. Oh man, this really does look how this image feels. It's stunning. I guess we'll just go around and look at all the buildings we can. This hotel is where Cloud and Sephiroth stay during their mission. Very rustic in here, super welcoming. Behind the counter is a poster that reads, Marvel at the ruby red sunset, Coral's unique red rocks. A little sneak peek of things to come later in the game. I love green. What is that? A book? The super bright pink and green caught my eye, but I can't make out what it's supposed to be. If you saw this cover on a store shelf, would you buy it? A fire extinguisher in the back corner, hidden behind a table. That can't be up to code. Oh my gosh, Cloud is a strong guy. 
Well, I knew he was strong, but I didn't think his normal stride could whip a big-ass chair around like that. Rooms upstairs are nice enough. The beds look comfy. Oh my god, I wish we could have seen Sephiroth sleeping in one of these. There's no way he could have fit without curling up into a ball. The clock isn't working. I'll have to lodge a complaint with the front desk. And I just realized, this hotel only has one room for guests. I guess they probably don't get a lot of visitors, considering how far out this town is. Next door is the general store. Ugh, this is beautiful. I mentioned how bare the Sector 7 item shop was in Remake, and it's like they saw that video from me a couple weeks ago and took that to heart. This is a real shop. The front counter's got some... stuff. Wait, how do they get behind it? Well, there's a little gate for them to walk through, but a stool with a lamp on top is in front of it. Does that mean they have to hop the counter every time? Those poor kids look too short to do that. Books, some crystals, a bunch of kitchenware. Nothing too fancy, but it'll get the job done. And some more bowls here. Okay, I guess this is just the bowl store. Around the corner is Zangon, leading the town in their daily calisthenics class. I've been reading The Traces of Two Pasts book, and part of it covers Tifa's life in Nibelheim after a cloud leaves. She eventually meets Zangon, and he convinces a lot of the town members to participate in daily stretches and exercises. It's awesome to be able to see it with my own eyes, the master in his element. It's also funny to see everyone struggle to maintain their balance during some of these. Right down here is a sneaky little path. At the end of it is a cat sanctuary. There was one of these in Midgar, too. I wonder if every town in this world has a secret area where cats congregate and plan their evil deeds. The next house is... Cloud's mom's house. You can choose to visit her, but it's only a cutscene. You don't get to walk around it, unfortunately. And Cloud doesn't want to go back in, so I guess we're not allowed to tour it. Next is... Ah, we'll come back to this. The Town Hall. I honestly remember nothing about this from the PS1 game. I don't even remember if there was a Town Hall or not. Hold on, I'll actually go back and check if there is a Town Hall in that game. Nothing that looks like this building on the outside. And no interiors like it either. Huh, this is a completely new addition. Nice and big in here. Oh wow, a lot of clutter. You love to see it. A photography magazine. We love cats and dogs. Yeah, everyone does in this world. A Shinra terminal. Considering they're so close to the reactor, I'm sure this is useful for reporting data about it back to Shinra, or maybe for employees of the company to use when they're in town. A completely empty picture frame. This game has no shortage of cute little pictures and artwork to decorate rooms, but it's funny this one is just empty. Ugh, I wish I could go behind the counter here. Wait a minute, did they do it again? Is there no way to get back there without climbing over? There's no door in the back. There are some tiny gaps where this long desk reaches the wall, but I doubt they'd force employees to squeeze through such a narrow space. I wonder if we'll be seeing this weird design oversight in a lot of the later towns. Got a back room here. Hmm, anything to talk about? Some more chairs to play around with. Don't mind if I do. That briefcase is huge, isn't it? I feel like the scale is slightly off if this is supposed to be a normal briefcase. But maybe it's not supposed to be. Maybe this is a jumbo briefcase. And finally, Tifa's house. She lives here with her dad, Brian. Cute little place they have set up for themselves. Aw, there's a picture of the two. Adorable. A cat tower for Fluffy. Also some food out over here. Unfortunately, she ran away again. She's always doing that. Those cabinet doors behind that chair, I don't think you'd be able to open them very well. Kinda weird it's packed so tightly. Hmm, not much else interesting downstairs here. What about upstairs? This is Brian's room. Two beds, presumably one for a guest staying in. Does that nightstand look weird to you? 
I feel like it should have drawers or something, but there's just an open gap at the top and solid wood below it. Bizarre piece of furniture. He's got a cowboy hat. And I remember seeing one downstairs. He has himself a nice little collection. Now, let's take a peek at Tifa's room. Definitely feels a bit more lively in here. A lot of colors to make it feel like it's not just a hotel room. This feels like it was decorated by a person with a personality. She really did lean into that cowboy aesthetic. Cowboy hat, as you'd expect. Boots. A poster about chocobo riding lessons. This one just says, Cowboy's Place. Good whiskey, gambling, dancing, beer. Interesting poster. Some of those crystals from the shop earlier. And pictures taped to the wall. You can't get that close with the in-game photo mode, so I'll zoom it in and post. Are these interesting? Aww, she has a little Moogle plush. I wonder if you can buy one of these in real life. If they don't sell these, they should get on that. They'd go like hotcakes. This rug design is kind of interesting. There's a chocobo there, but I don't know what to make of the rest of the pattern. Is this supposed to mean something, or just look cool? And of course, her piano. I shouldn't be surprised that they went all out for this. They give you all these controls so you can freestyle to your heart's content. And they added pieces that you can presumably collect across the game world. It's like a little rhythm game with you playing along. I'm not a piano guy, but if I was, I have a feeling I'd be spending a lot of time here when I should be saving the planet or something. I'll still play the pieces though. So that's Tifa's place, and unfortunately our last stop in Nibelheim. Well, inside Nibelheim. Just in the outskirts of town is Shinra Manor. Bro, why is this place so spooky? This feels straight out of Scooby-Doo or something. A lot of clutter around here, and a ton of stuff to kick up. I don't think I'll ever get tired of doing this. I'm pretty sure they tweaked the layout compared to the original. The elevator to the basement is in this room, where in the original, I think it was on the right side of the second floor. I'm pretty sure it was, but I might be stupid. Well, I am stupid, but that's unrelated to whether I'm right or wrong here. In this flashback, you don't get to go up there. I'm sure when you return in the present day, you will though. Looking forward to exploring the second floor. Nice and spacious room here. Even more stuff to throw around. Wait a minute, there's a ton of candles lit. It's implied that Sephiroth has been the only one hanging around here recently, but he's been cooped up in the basement reading books. Maybe the manor still has a butler that keeps up with the candles. He's got a lot to keep track of if that's the case. Let's take the elevator down and see what awaits us. This is a big ol' cavern. I played Remake, so I know you're gonna fight a boss in here when you return. Or at least a handful of enemies. That game primed me to think that when I see big empty rooms like this. I would say I'll check back in my follow-up tour of the game to confirm whether or not there is a fight in here, but there's no point. I am literally 100% sure it's going to happen. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. Torn back? Turn back? The letter after the T is weird. And turn back from what? There's no door on this wall that you could even go through. What's all this? Ooh, I have a more risky prediction. These bright lights here draw you to the gate in this valve. I'm gonna predict that when you return here, you'll have to turn this valve and that'll do something which releases monsters to fight. That's what the turn back is for, it's to warn you that you'll be attacked. And maybe turning the valve opens the door to Vincent's room. I'll definitely maybe comment on that in my follow-up video if I remember, probably. Oh, Vincent's room. Right through here is where Vincent is getting his beauty sleep. Turn B. Okay, the decal is cut off by the door. And there's a little bit of back poking through the rock layer. Games are big, alright? It's easy for developers to miss stuff like this sometimes. It's fine. Just let me in to see Vincent now. I'll be good, I promise. Ugh, guess we'll have to free him later. And finally, the little lab at the end. All kinds of tests went down in here. Huh, two tubes. I wonder who these were for. 
It's not too dingy. I could appreciate hanging out in here. Sephiroth definitely can. He's been reading everything in here. Just look at him down there, nose buried in old Shinra documents. I have to say, they've set a high bar for future towns in the game. They knocked Nibelheim out of the park here, and I can't wait to see what the other locations look like. Who knows what little world details are hiding, just waiting to be found later in the game. Check out either of these videos up next. I don't know how many more tours I'm going to put out on this game, but there's going to be at least one more. It might be a bit as I play through the game though, so get subscribed to see it when it comes out. Hopefully you'll enjoy some of the other videos I put out in the meantime. Thanks for watching and see you next time.